Hello everyone, Sandra here. So in this video, I'm going to be go over my idea on how to build Ayaka. Now, of course, this is a pre-release analysis. So things might turn out very different once the meta for Ayaka build is settled. So do keep that in mind. Of course, another thing, a huge thank you to everyone for 2000 subscribers. For those of you who have not subscribed, if you think I've earned your subscription, please consider subscribing. And thank you to everyone who has subscribed. With that out of the way, let's get started into the actual content. So I'm going to do it the other way around. Instead of going through her skills and kit first, I will be recommending her weapons and artifacts first. Then last we can look at her kit, which in turn then we can go to her output style and team comps potential. So first let's start with her builds. Now of course the most popular build is going to be a Cryo Ayaka build. However, for those people who are very interested, it is pop possible to build her as a physical DPS, just as Kachin can be built as electro or physical. So for 5 star weapons for Cryo builds, Mist Splitter's Reflection is going to be the best uh, weapon in slot. Other than that, Primordial Jade Cutter, Summit Shaper, and Skyward Blade can all be used. Mist Splitter's Reflection is the best because of the crowd damage bonus it gives. Primordial Jade Cutter is a flat attack buff, which is very good on a main DPS. Summit Shaper is a shield and attack buff again, very good on a DPS. And Skyward Blade is there for the energy recharge and the crit rate increase for the passive as well. For a physical Ayaka build, if you are looking for 5 star weapons, I would only recommend Aquila Favonia for both the passives and the physical damage bonus substats. For 4 weapons, for Cryo build, you can look at the Black Sword, Black Cliff, Black Cliff Longsword. However, for Black Cliff Longsword, you do have to look into how often you can trigger the passive, since it's more generally used for the crit damage substats. Festering Desire is another good one if you have that one at R5 from uh, if you got it from patch 1.2 you have it at R5 which is good on Ayaka because of the energy recharge however the passive is not very useful because she has a very long cooldown for both. The Flute is a decent option if you want to use it just for the attack substats. Favonia Sword and Sacrificial Sword are both good because of the energy because of the extra energy gained from either the passives in the case of Favonia Sword or the in the case of the F Sacrificial Sword, two, uh, two of her E's in a row can also generate some extra particles. And those are also good for their energy recharge substats. And lastly, if you're looking for the free to play builds, Iron Stain is going to be the worst option. And as well as the new craftable for Sword for Ayaka will be the best free to play option. So moving on to the physical build, physical build I would only recommend either the Black Sword, the Black Cliff Long Sword, or Rancor because for physical build you don't really care about your ultimate or your E, you just want to dish out as much physical damage as possible. So either go with something that has crit which allows you to build stack more on attack when it comes to artifacts or build on Rancor which already has physical damage bonus. Now let's move on to artifacts. One thing to know before we start on artifacts, Snowfield and Glacier, which is the set that has been leaked for about a patch now, it will most likely not come in patch 1.7 slash 2.0 because the set was not available during the beta testing for 2.0. So with that said, I will not be considering that set as a potential build. However, that set, uh, both the two piece and the four piece can be very good if it comes out. Ayaka can take full advantage of that. So with that out of the way, let's go to the artifact build. The artifact build I would recommend is 4 piece Blizzard Strayer because it allows you to completely stack on crit damage without worrying about the crit rate. However, the main drawback for 4 piece Blizzard Strayer is if you are in any sort of co-op and anyone brings a Geo or a Pyro element, then you can always make sure that the enemies no longer will be frozen or at least they won't be crowd affected which does decrease your crit rate by quite a bit. Apart from that, the more stable build for a lower damage ceiling and a higher damage floor is 2-piece Blizzard Strayer or 2-piece Gladiator or Shimmy. Gladiator and the Reflection of Shimmy both increases attack by 18%, which is pretty good for a main DPS, while the 2-piece Blizzard Strayer covers up the crowd damage bonus needed. 
Now if you're going with the physical Ayaka route, the 4 piece pale flame is very hard to keep up unless you have C1. Even with C1 it is very hard to keep up so I would not recommend that. If you're going for a pure physical Ayaka build, I would recommend four 2 piece pale flames, 2 piece bloodstain for that 50% physical damage bonus. And if you're going for more of a hybrid build, you can swap out two of the physical pieces with two piece glider or two piece shimmy again for uh, attack percent increase. And for the more wild build, you can go for a four piece blood stained. However, that is only working in the open world because in domains, especially in the abyss, there tends to be small. Uh, bigger groups, bigger enemies, however smaller groups of them. So it is very hard to trigger the four piece passive. So with that out of the way, now let's move on to her kit. I'll quickly briefly mention her kit and after that we'll look at potential ways to potential ways to play her in a team. So one thing to note regarding her ascension material since we're already looking at her kit. All you can prepare right now is the Shivada Jade, which drops from the Cryo Hypostasis, a uh, Cryo Hypostasis or the Cryo Regis Fine. Other than that, everything else is related to Inazuma, so this is the only thing you can prep right now, other than of course Mora and the XP books, of course. So with that out of the way, now let's take a look at her actual kit. So for her normal, for her attack patterns, her normal attacks, the five head auto attack combo has pretty nice rate, rate even with the recent nerf. On top of that, her charge attack is very high in terms of damage as well. So her main that will be her main source of damage. Five head normal combos weaved in with charge attacks. And as for her plunge attack and damage, it's okay, but it's not the most impressive when it comes to plunge attack damages. Moving on to her E, her E does not do much damage when it comes to damage wise and it has a relatively long cooldown of 10 seconds. It is mostly used to kind of launch smaller enemies as well as, as just as a AOE crowd application and one time hit. So it will be useful if you are either building her perma free style or if you are playing her physical style to trigger freeze or superconduct with this one time application. The other way she can apply cryo is through her dash skill. So her dash is similar to Mona's, I won't explain it too much, essentially once you hold onto the dash key, she dives into the ground, forms a group of ice around her when she is traveling, and when she comes out, she will affect nearby enemies with cryo. So that is the second way to apply her cryo, it is also very effective. For a move on to her ultimate or her burst. So there are two ways to play her cryo. You can also play her with the main damage as normal or charge attack. The other way to play is to have her as a burst DPS where her cryo, where her burst does most of the damage. So the burst damage can go very high because the burst does stack up to 20 stacks if you manage to get the full hit. However, a few things to note, if there is any sort of obstacle within the way of her burst, it will not move forward. Secondly, for larger enemies, it is harder to completely destroy their tenacity bar, and you must have the tenacity bar completely destroyed before the ultimate can push them a lot. So for bigger enemies, it will be harder to hit 20 stacks, but for smaller sized enemies like Helotro, they will be able to hit almost all 20 stacks. On top of that, Venti's ultimate can help control the enemies with Ayaka's ultimate as well. So that is one thing to keep in mind if you have a Venti, at least that was the case in beta server. Let's hope that they will keep it the case for the actual server. So if you have a Venti, you can use that to gather enemies and then push them through with Ayaka's ultimate. Moving on to her talent ascension materials, these are still all needed from Inazuma as well. There is not much prep you can do, again, other than Mora, and all of her ascension mats for past level 6 drops from Astaha. So if you get lucky, you have those as well. So moving on to her passive talents, the one uh, the one that is not used in combat is that she has a 10% chance to double the product when craft weapon assumption materials. I believe that is the same one as Albedo, so it is very useful when it comes to building weapons, however it does not have much use daily wise other than that. Moving on to her actual two damage wise pass passive talents, these are more useful. So for the first one, after using her elemental skill, she has 
her normal and charge attack deals 30% increased damage for 6 seconds. So this is very nice. It effectively means 4 seconds downtime because the skill core time is 10 seconds. So after 10 seconds, you have a 6 second DPS window uh, using normal and charge attack. And you have a 4 second D DPS window with your ultimate if that is ready or to swap into other teams. Uh, to swap into other team members for damage output. And for her sec second passive talent, when crowd application is applied at the end of Kamisato art, Hensho hits an opponent, Kamisato Ayaka gains the following effects, restores 10 stamina, gains crowd damage bonus for 10 seconds. So this can also be very useful. So Personally, I believe the best way to play her is to come out of her dash in the middle of the enemies, apply all of them with cryo, then immediately pop her E. So this, you're effectively gaining a 40% cryo damage bonus, which is huge. That's almost two thirds of a cup for six seconds. And after those six seconds, you still have around three seconds uptime of 10% cryo damage bonus. And that's when you can release your ultimate to do more damage, of course, if your energy is ready. Otherwise, it is also a good time to swap to other team members for damage output. So with that out of the way, I won't talk too much about constellations because I know most people won't be going for them. However, I'll briefly touch on team comps regarding how she can be built. So currently there is a few ways to build her. What has been happening in beta server is most people build her as a perma freeze comp alongside Shin Chu, and I believe that is still the meta way to go. Even um, so, she did receive the buffs that allows her to now play as a melt comp. However, the problem is for melt for max damage, you do want to trigger it from the cryo side, I believe. And currently, there is no pyro character that can apply pyro fast enough to keep up with her. So there is basically no pyro Shin Cho at the moment. So it is very hard for any pyro characters to keep up with her. Of course, you can use a pyro callus like Yanfei and then do one Yanfei attack and then go back to Ayaka. But that is again a waste of DPS. So currently, I believe Perma Freeze is still going to be the meta play. Now, of course, I've said before, if you're going for a physical comp, her frequent crowd application can work very well as well. In that case, you will be looking at someone like Fischl or Lisa to quickly apply Electro on top to cause Superconduct, which essentially decreases enemy physical resistance by 40% to allow you to do more physical damage. Other than that, a few characters to note to put or not put in the team. So Albedo and Zhang Li has been a pretty stable support for any team. However, if you're going for perma freeze and you care about your crit rate, I would recommend to put none of them in the team because Zhang Li's pillar and Albedo's geoflower will both cause shatter on frozen enemies, which effectively unlocks their cryo affected status that can cause a 40% decrease on Ayaka's kit depending on how much crit rate you are running between the four piece blazer strayer and then the two cryo elemental resonance so if you're going rap route I would recommend not putting Zhang Li or Albedo instead I would recommend Diona as a shielder if you have Diona and also a few characters to note regarding her, Chuang Yun is always a good one to add to her team because Chuang Yun's E's crowd infusion can cover up the loss of time she has with her crowd infusion. So it essentially allows for a pretty much all uptime with her crowd with her sword dealing crowd damage, which again, she is scaled off of. And if you're going physical, of course, don't put Chuang Yun. Fischl, I've said before, if you're going Electro, do put Fischl on the team to cause Superconduct. It is also a good f f source of off field damage. However, again, if you're building physical, you will not be able to benefit from the crit of double cryo characters. Same case with Eula. Ganyu, if you have her, is going to be a good off field support. In this case, you can just play Ganyu as a Q spam or with a few E to taunt enemies. However, Ganyu doesn't do much utility wise other than providing the second crowd character needed for that so if you do have other better options i wouldn't recommend gong you here i you would just put her on her own team as a main dps i don't think she is needed to play support here Rosaria is going to be another very good crowd sub DPS, but again, same problem as the previous ones. She doesn't do much other than DPS level wise. So if you want a healer, Diona is still the best support option. 
and sucrose and venti of course you can consider because of their ability to gather enemies and that is very good for ayaka because the easier the enemies can be gathered the more she can do damage even though she doesn't really have any sort of constant aoe attacks however the way she works benefits from having enemies gathered together and the last person to talk about is of course Xin Chu. If you have him, definitely put him on a team with Ayaka for perma freeze comp. That is going to allow you to effectively keep enemies frozen at all times, which allows you for a huge crit rate increase if you're building a 4 piece Blizzard Strayer set. That is all the information I have for you today. If you like the content, please consider subscribing. Thank you and have a nice day.